All right, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to our March PTO meeting. Just as a reminder, we record all of these meetings. I just turned on the recording and we send the link out during my Friday message to our entire school community. There are a few other participants joining, but we're gonna get started. We have a pretty packed and really, I think a great agenda for, for today. Also, just as a reminder, at, when you enter the Zoom, you are on mute, just so it eliminates any background noise. If you have a question or feel like participating, just remember to unmute yourself. And then when you're finished, if you can mute again, that would be great. I am going to start by turning it over to Kyler, our PTO president, who is going to share a few updates and then we'll get right into our agenda. So Kyler, good morning and you're on. Thanks, TJ. Um, okay, I just have a few things to talk about today. First is um, we've been looking at different ways to raise some money and um, our treasurer, Tracy Hardy has, kindly set us up with Amazon Smile. Um, I know a lot of people already use this for different um, nonprofit organizations, but Hand um, PTO now can be the recipient of Amazon Smile donations. Um, there's no cost to you um, as a per, um, purchaser, I guess is the word for it, but um, it's there's a pretty simple process of um, signing up for it. You, instead of, um, you just have to go to um, smile.amazon.com um, when you make your purchases and then you can direct them to Daniel Ham PTO. We will be sending out both a little um, kind of cheat sheet about how to do this in TJ's Friday email as well as on our Facebook page. Um, we're going to provide a link to make it super easy for you to do it but if you haven't already signed up to do so or you're been supporting a different organization, but want to make a change and want to support PT, um, Daniel Ham PTO, that would be fabulous. Um, so we look forward to getting some money that way. Um, and the second thing I wanted to talk about is we, um, to announce that we will be accepting nominations for vacant PTO roles for the next, um, for roles starting in academic year 2022-23. Um, these are two-year terms and it's going to be the open positions are president and one of the vice president roles. Um, again, in Friday's email, we will um, be sending out more details about um, what each role entails, the nomination form and kind of a timeline of what um, the nomination process. But if you're at all interested in um, joining the PTO on the executive board level, uh, we are really happy to have um, new faces. You don't have to have experience in PTO. If you've had experience in PTO, that's fabulous as well. Um, the Daniel Hand, uh, PTO is run quite differently than the other schools in terms of um, involvement um, and activities, but there's still a lot of really great things to do um, to support the school and the students. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me either personally or through the Daniel Hand PTO email, and I'm happy to answer any questions, um, kind of ease concerns, um, act as a cheerleader if you're, you're on the fence. Um, but um, more information again will come out this Wednesday. I mean, I'm oh, sorry, I have to do that, give it to TJ Wednesday, this Friday, there'll be more information about that. Um, and those of you who have children at um, Polson coming up, we will also be circulating it to um, the Polson um, community for those rising um, ninth graders, parents of rising ninth graders, because they are also eligible to stand for roles on our PTO. That's it, I think for me, TJ. Great, Kyler. Appreciate the updates. And we're going to continue with updates. Night at Hand, we have Lisa Rana and Beth O'Keefe who are going to share some Night at Hand updates. They've been working really hard for you know what we're hoping to be a great event in June. So Beth and Lisa, thanks for joining us again this morning. Hey, thank you very much. Um, we're really excited about Night in Hand. Um, the organization is really coming together. Um, we've tried to get the word out to um, a volunteer. We've got sign up list. We have close, or we have just over a hundred students registered, I believe, as of like yesterday. So we're really hoping for a hundred percent participation. So uh, we're obviously going to extend the deadline um, to to allow more, you know, more of the seniors to join us. But um, the best we can, the the best we can hope to do is to spread the word to get people to really jump on board to our sign up genius to look at ways that they can help us, you know, even in the smallest ways. Um, our auction is approaching too. Um, our date is April eighth. So 
It's a Friday night. The auction is going to be at Camp Laura Wood from six to nine. So we're going to launch a lot of that information this week too um, through eNotifies to get out sign up geniuses, how you can help us with the auction, which is like our biggest fundraiser to make night in hand possible. So we're really trying to reach the underclassmen as well, like the freshmen and sophomores to really make them part of this process to really kind of get them on board so that, you know, they can take these leadership roles. And we've tried to set it up too. So like even the smallest, you know, the, the smallest step toward becoming part of this great program, um, you know, we can try to get them, try to get as many people in so it doesn't seem as overwhelming. You know, Lisa and I are here to be like, you know, uh, Kyler said like cheerleaders. We don't want it to be like daunting. We want it to be fun. It is a like a, an extraordinary night for those of you who've seen it. Um, and it is a really safe and fun way to keep the kids safe for the night of graduation. So any questions you have, please, you know, feel free to reach out to us. If you, again, are on the fence and you're not sure, you know, we can experiment, we can go through this together because I really think we can build this program. We can make this night spectacular. We just need to get like everybody behind it, to, you know, to really make it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Beth. Those are great updates. And just a reminder, in my Friday message right at the end, the Night at Hand email contact is available. So if you have any questions, you know, just click right on that. You know, the more help, the better. And it, it's a great event. We're working behind the scenes regarding some of the challenges presented with a Night at Hand when school's still in session for other students. So lots going on behind the scenes. Beth, Lisa, Kyler, we certainly appreciate your efforts as well as everyone else who's volunteered. For this really exciting event it's you know march from march 1st today which means graduation will be here before you know it so it is going by really quickly so our next agenda topic kyler we were going to do the poll for oh that's right oh you have to explain why do you want me to or would you like to oh you can if you want to all right so we wanted to have an idea of format for future pto meetings as we move forward obviously we're hopeful that we're moving in the right direction with this pandemic. You know, we took masks off yesterday in school as you know, per choice, and it was an excellent day. I'll talk about that in a little bit later. But moving forward, we wanted to get your input as to how we should host our PTO meetings, whether it be in person, Zoom, a combination. So we're going to try the polling feature in Zoom, which I can't promise I did it properly, but I think I did. So I'm gonna launch a poll in a second and you could select a choice and hit submit and give us immediate input. And we'll use that as we start planning for next year. So you're going to see a question that says, what is your preferred PTO meeting format? Then you click one of the responses. Hopefully you can see this. Someone give me a thumbs up if you could see it. All right, Mrs. Witcher, thanks for the nod. I appreciate it. So you could jump right in and answer it right now. That would be excellent. And there is no wrong answer. This is the best type of quiz we ever allow. Mm -hmm. All right, we have 22 of 27 participated. We'll give it a few more seconds. And TJ, if I can interact while people are doing their um, answering. Part of this too is um, by our bylaws. If we have any contested um, positions on the PTO board, we need to be able to vote. And this is a anonymous um, way we can vote via Zoom since we're not in person to raise hands and, and to pass out ballots and things like that. So this is the other reason why we're testing this at this point. So I'm not sure how the data from the survey saved. So I'm just gonna take a quick picture of it before I end the actual launched question. And just about everyone participated, which I really appreciate. And I'm gonna end the poll now. And actually share results, can you see that? So those were the results from the quick poll. And I thought it would be a neat tool and like Kyler mentioned, you know, as we move forward with selecting new positions, we may have to use this tool, which seems to be pretty simple to use. The only thing I will tell you is if you've never used it, you can't set it up in advance. You have to be in the active Zoom to set it up, which 
you know, isn't really that challenging, but it's definitely worth noting as we move forward, especially Kyler, if it's a really lengthy amount of info, you need to know that in advance. So thank you everyone for participating. And now I am going to transition the meeting agenda to Mr. Bodner and Mrs. Witcher, who have done some work again behind the scenes to have some of our clubs present, which has been a highlight from some of our meetings recently. So Mr. Bodner and Mrs. Witcher. Thank you, Mr. Sanitary. Um, so we do have several different clubs today to present similar to the last few meetings. Um, we have the club advisors here, as well as with some students to present when their club meets, what their club does, and how your child can get involved. So the first club is with Mr. Brian for the Latin club. So Mr. Brian, you can take over. Oh, sorry, we, we were doing D&D first. Uh, so the Latin club, I you have- You can do D&D first if that's what you're prepared okay. for. I'm totally fine with that. I have Rory here now. So uh, Rory and Francesca here for uh, the Latin club. Um, I actually have a, let me a quick slideshow that has like a few points on it. Do you want us to share that? Okay, I will sure, try that. Right. Great, thank you. Slideshow being shown, yes? Great, love technology. All right, um, so I'll, I'll let them go for it. Okay, you're gonna stay. Okay, hello, uh, I'm Rory. I'm Francesca. Yeah, okay. Uh, so. This is Latin Club. Uh, what we seek to do. Uh, Latin Club seeks to explore the culture of Roman people and find connections between the modern and ancient world. Uh, this connection sometimes comes in forms of comparative linguistics. Uh, in years prior to COVID, uh, the club has prepared for Connecticut State Latin Day and we hope to go again next year. Uh, we were not able to. Yes. Um, uh, what we have done. <laughs> um, with about 15 members, give or take, in Latin Club, we have done the following. Um, gingerbread Pompeii um, and other various holiday themed activities. Cahoots in German, uh, English on various topics uh, and other trivia, like expert. Is it? Yeah, expert was the other one we played. Uh, board games like Chariots and Betrayal, which were very fun. Mythic movie Mondays, which Hercules, uh, and Percy Jackson in German, don't ask. Um, mythological moments and miscellanea. Um, we watch YouTube videos and whatnot. Um, and then TV shows that relate to Latin, watch Phineas and Ferb, which was, we watched the, the Ferb Latin episode. And then pictures from Latin Club. We have the gingerbread Pompeii for Sat Saturnalia. That was one I made. Um, and then the club photo taken by me, which has most of the people in it. Um, and yeah, uh, the club meets on Mondays, Mondays uh, two to three, and anyone joins. We have a few kids who are not Latin students who are actually part of the yeah. club. Actually, I think most kids are not. Uh, probably half and half. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to know Latin to join. They don't actually talk much in Latin. Great. Are there any questions? Fantastic. Cool. Um, then I'm going to, if you don't mind, move on to the D&D &D club now. Um, and I have with me Sam Gentile and Morgan uh, O'Halloran. Nope, that's not right. O'Halloran. That's right? Okay, good. I've had you for two years. I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? You did a good job. Uh, hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Sam. Uh, and we are the uh, resident DMs for the Dungeons and Dragons clubs, which meets uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, depending on whose campaign you're in. Um, basically, D&D uh, &D is, at, here in D&D &D Club, we uh, have self-contained and student-run uh, campaigns uh, where we play D&D, &D, a sort of tabletop role-playing game, in which people are allowed to, like, use creative problem solving and like create their own characters and like explore different uh, worlds and like theater of the mind. Um, clubs gained a lot of popularity after popularization of tabletop gaming through YouTube channels like Critical Role. Um, we have seen a large influx of students wanting to join various campaigns just because of things that they've seen on YouTube. And Morgan, myself, and Mr. Byron are more than happy to run these campaigns. The three of us act as kind of storytellers as we take our players to the collective worlds that we've either taken or created ourselves. Um, you already said that? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, normally, we use both online and physical uh, representations of characters. And norm uh, normally, we use a platform called D&D Beyond, which is a very useful website and toolkit, which allows people to have access to all necessary materials and source books needed to play Dungeons and Dragons. That's it. That's it. That's a job. Yep. Um, we meet Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and usually we have usually we have like set campaigns starting like at the start of the year, but um we could always like find another day to work and yeah. add more depending mm -hmm. on who wants to join us. Yeah. Any questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Bryan, and thank you to the students for presenting those clubs. Um, the next club that is presenting is the Spanish club. So do we have, I don't see either Ms. Gulley or Mr. I'm, Garcia. I'm here, oh, actually. There you go. I see you now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> We're in Mr. Bryan's room together. Um, so good morning. I'm Senorita Gali. I'm one of the Spanish teachers. Um, here at hand. And um, I have run Spanish clubs for the last number of years. And I am here with two of our leaders, Sydney Abouyan and Matt Farmer, who are going to talk about all of the incredible activities that we've done in the past, what we're doing this year, and what we hope to do in future years. Hi, I'm Sydney, and this is Matt. And so I've been a part of Spanish clubs since my freshman year. And we've done a lot of different things, a lot of different projects, but uh, with COVID recently, we've been kind of limited for like what we can do within the school and also within like the community outside of hand. So we've done a lot for what we could in the past few years. And here's a few of what we've done in the past. So freshman year, my freshman year, we took a field trip to a magnet school in New London and half of the kids that go there are bilingual or um, Spanish is their first language. Uh, so we were teaching them English literacy skills and reading books with them. We made puppets and did crafts and formed uh, some uh, friendships with the little kids. They were, uh, I think, kindergartners and first graders. So that was really fun. And we have been trying to do more stuff like that, uh, but with COVID again, it's been difficult, but we're trying to do that again this year. We've also worked with um, kindergartners at Jeffrey School, and we've done arts and craft activities, and um, we've played songs with them and just introduced them to Spanish language in small ways that hopefully will start to ignite in them at a young age. So um, we've also made uh, uh, authentic Spanish cuisine here at hand with the help of Flora Gali. Um, this year we made, or last year we made arepas, and which are like, what are they made? Like Colombian corn cakes. So Colombian corn cakes. So that was really cool, and it's just a fun way to learn more about uh, Spanish language and cultures through food. And then we also did more work within um, the hands community this year, uh, as far as community service, with making Valentine's Day cards for faculty here and different departments, uh, English, uh, language departments, uh, science department, math department, and that was really fun too. And so we hope to get back to more community service outside of the school community as COVID allows to do so. Um, we meet every Friday from 2 to 3, sometimes 2 to 3.30 uh, in Senorita Gali's room, room 239, and anyone is welcome, even if you don't speak Spanish. We have a few people who don't currently take Spanish that are in the club. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Sydney. Thanks, Senior Gwali. And Mr. Bodner, I believe you're next. Yes, thank you, members of, again, the Latin Club Dungeons and Dragons, as well as the Spanish Club for those presentations. The next clubs that we will be hearing from, um, first is our math team, followed by handprint. I want to add that our math team is advised by Mrs. Grohl and Mrs. Fetchel, and they are an incredibly unique club in the fact that they have a banner hanging in the Daniel Hand gym. So I will now turn things over to the math team and let them share more about their club. Hi, thank you, uh, Mr. Bodner. Um, I'm Mrs. Grohl, and um, I've been involved in coaching the math team this year with uh, Mrs. Fetchel, um, but I've been involved in coaching since 2009. 
And the person who coached prior to me was involved in coaching for over 30 years. So our team's been around for at least 40 years um, and maybe longer. And we have both a varsity team and a JV team. We participate in the Greater Middlesex County League. Most years there are about 10 teams. We compete um, seven varsity meets and four JV meets each season. We travel um, and all of the teams in the league compete at the same time. Last year during COVID, we um, had remote meets um, that were hybrid, quite interesting. Um, and for the past 12 years, we have ended up number one or number two in our league, which has qualified us to go to the state meet, uh, which last year was completely remote, but most of the time we travel all over the, the state to various schools to uh, participate. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over now to one of our captains, Federico Barrero, who's gonna share some thoughts with you. Uh, yeah, well, hello everyone. My name is Federico Barrera. I'm currently a junior here at hand and captain of the math team. I've been involved in the team for three years. So two things. First of all, we meet weekly and bi-weekly to discuss and to practice throughout the year in preparation for monthly competitions. And secondly, in the math team, it's just great because it allows kids who are interested in math to come together with other like-minded kids and overall just learned. So first getting into the practices and competition. So as I said, we meet bi-weekly or weekly. And now that we are nearing the end of our season, we are meeting bi-weekly Mondays and Wednesdays after school in Miss Girls' room. And when we meet um, for practice, kids generally work um, on past year's problems, problems we save from past competitions. And kids will work individually, but then we also leverage the fact that we're a large group and we cooperate to see if we can clear each other's doubts when we come across problems that we can't solve. And that way we all benefit from each other. Um, and as Ms. Grohl mentioned, we have monthly competitions and traditionally we travel to other schools. The competitions are test-based, meaning that in a typical competition, um, students from schools will complete a test and then their individual scores will determine how our school did overall. And currently we are standing number one in our league. Now, secondly, uh, there is the social and educational value of math. So practice and competition, that's what we do. And here's why we do it, the social and educational value. So socially in uh, math team, it's great just because as I said, it brings together kids who have an interest in math and beyond the school setting. That is, our team members either have math as like their favorite class or even have math as a deep hobby, right? So having math team is a place where these kids can come together and share their common interest. And secondly, um, there's the educational value of math team. Um, as a result of the practices, as a result of the competitions, we gain a deeper understanding of math. So like the problems that we'll deal with in competitions and our practice are accessible in the sense that the math problems all deal with familiar concepts. We, anyone learns in class and there's no new specialized knowledge you need. And so number one, it's accessible, but secondly, it's beneficial because the problems we deal with um, go deeper than the traditional school curriculum. So in that sense, um, we also benefit in terms of our understanding of math. So number one, we compete, but most importantly, these are the reasons why we compete. Um, and yes, that's about it for now. Um, I open myself up to any questions if there are any. Okay. Thank, thank you very much um, to the math team, to both Mrs. Grohl, Mrs. Fetchel, and to Federico for that you know, incredible presentation. It was certainly informative. Again, to um, ask, does anyone have any questions for the group? Okay, it seems like there, there aren't any questions again. Thank you so much. And I just want to add once again that I was not joking. The math team does have a banner and hopefully they remain in first place because when they win the league, um, like all of our teams at our school, 
um, a, a new year is added to the banner. So hopefully this is a year that where they get to add to their league championships and best wishes going forward. At this point, we will transition to our um, group of students who are gonna discuss Handprint. Handprint is our school newspaper that several years ago transitioned to a digital format. And our students will, at this point, join our meeting and share with us um, how a student can join Handprint and what they do. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bodner. So um, my name is Karen Pathy. I'm Alexia. I'm Lillian Miller. And we're all leaders within the handprint. And uh, just to go over what the handprint is, as Mr. Bodner said, the handprint is a student-run newspaper for our school. Uh, the members of our club uh, write articles about a variety of topics that concern our school community, uh, such as the COVID response that we've had uh, over the past couple of years and our sports teams and then many more issues. We interview a wide variety of people uh, throughout our school community for articles so that we get new perspectives on many issues. And additionally, um, the handprint, writing in the handprint allows um, an alternative uh, style of writing that might not be available to students within uh, traditional English curriculum. Um, Mr. Harris and Mrs. Smith are the advisors for the club. It's open to any student in the high school. The meetings are held on Mondays and Thursdays, um, but people in the club can choose to go to either or both days. Um, at the meetings, uh, contributors do a range of tasks concerning the newspaper, such as writing and planning articles, brainstorming ideas, and gathering photos for articles. Um, we meet in Mr. Harris's room from 2 to 2.30. Um, our goal for the coming trimester is to really focus on recruitment and getting more members since we have, haven't seen as many members as we would like um, due to COVID and not really having in-person school last year. Um, so we want to get more members so that we can more frequently publish articles that can be accessed by scanning one of the QR codes on the posters around school. Uh, thank you all for listening, and we're open to any questions. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't look like there are any questions in the chat or anyone that has unmuted um, to ask any. Again, I want to thank you very much and encourage parents um, if you talk about handprint with your students that you encourage them to talk to Mr. Harris or Mrs. Smith as they are the advisors and that they attend an upcoming meeting. Thank you again so much students. I just like to thank the students as well. It's always really informative. We'll have more presentations to go over various clubs as we move forward. And Mr. Bodner, Mrs. Witcher, thanks for organizing. I know it's not always easy during the school day, but we do appreciate the information and you know, really exciting things happening at hand. Just two reminders, there's a list of all of our clubs on our website and a student can start a club anytime they want. You know, they just have to come up with a good idea, have an advisor and they meet with me and we, I don't know if I've ever said no to a request for a club. So it's certainly open to all students to create clubs as well. We are going to transition now. We have two of the members of our school counseling department with us today. We have Cynthia Scarston and Chrissy Coyle. And they're going to talk about a variety of topics. Some of them are just going to be some brief reminders, but the first topic was a request from a few parents that is a really good request to talk about the differences between AP courses and UConn ECE courses. So Chrissy and Cynthia, I appreciate your time as well as your prep for today's presentation. They're going to share a screen and give you a lot of information that I think I'll learn a lot from it as well. So thank you both. and. The Zoom floor is yours. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about AP courses. There seem to be some questions about that. So here at Hand High School, um, we offer a variety of um, AP courses. And um, the purpose of taking AP courses, as you can see, it can give you um, an advantage at the, you know, at the collegiate level 
Um, you can earn college credit and placement. Um, your AP scores could earn you credit before you even set foot on a college campus. In fact, most AP students enroll in four-year colleges. They start school with some um, college credit. Another reason to take AP courses is you can save money and time. Earning credit or placement can op open up time in your schedule or even let you graduate early. A third reason is you can stand out to colleges with AP on your high school transcripts, shows colleges that you're motivated to succeed and you have the opportunity to take the AP exam in March, I mean in May, and um, that demonstrates your commitment to tackle and um, complete uh, college level work. Um, okay, Ms. Coyle, do you wanna switch to the next screen and I'll show a little bit about these are all of the AP courses that we offer here at Hand High School. Ms. Coyle, you wanna take over? Sure, we're also really excited that we're able to offer our students not only the benefit of the AP program, but a program called UConn Early College Experience. And if you haven't heard about this program, essentially in a nutshell, what it is, is that Daniel Hand offers courses that are aligned with classes that are taught at UConn. And our teachers are essentially certified as UConn adjunct professors. So that allows our kids to get the opportunity to get college credit while they're taking their high school courses. So some of the benefits of the program are listed, outlined here, just this is directly from the UConn ECE website. And they're similar to the AP program, obviously, um, but it is unique in the sense that as long as the students enroll in the program, pay the fee and maintain a C average, they'll receive a UConn transcript listing the course and the credit. And then if students decide to enroll at UConn after they graduate, these courses will obviously be applied toward their college graduation, but it's not just for UConn. So if a student decides to enroll in another university, that credit can be applied possibly as transfer credit at many, many universities. Um, so if you or your student is interested in taking a look at that, you can look on the UConn ECE website. They actually have a credit transfer database that lists the potential or the possibility at various universities and where these courses may be applied as transfer credit. Um, there is a fee for the program. It's $50 per credit and courses range anywhere from three to eight credits, depending on which Daniel Hand High School course the student selects. Um, and although there is a fee, you can see that the cost is significantly less expensive than a course that's offered on the UConn campus. Um, I also want to note that students have the option to not participate in UConn ECE. So if your student enrolls in one of these courses, they can still take it for Daniel Hand High School credit and not have to pay the fee. So that's really important. I don't want to deter students from not taking a class. Um, this is the listing of courses, and you can see this in the program of study as well. All of those courses are outlined for you. You'll notice that there is some overlap in the sense that several AP courses are also UConn ECE courses. So students may take the AP exams and enroll in UConn ECE, but colleges will not award double the credit, so to speak. So instead they'll award the credit through one program or another. And depending on where the kid enrolls in school, they may be more likely to take AP versus UConn ECE. Each college has a different requirement. So um, we usually recommend that students take advantage of both opportunities. So if you are, for example, taking AP US history, sign up for the AP exam and sign up for the UConn ECE so that you'll give yourself more opportunity for the potential to um, receive credit transfer. So, um, with that, I'll pause for a minute and see if anyone has any questions on either of those programs before we roll into just a quick update from our department in other areas. Anyone have any questions or comments on that? All right. Um, so just some other general quick updates from our department. This summer, we're going to be offering again a common app workshop, which is helpful for students who are rolling into their senior year. Um, we'll give more information and details about that when we have it. 
um, including the dates and the, and the fee and uh, registration information and all of that. Um, another thing that is important for you guys to be thinking about are college visits. If you have kids that are juniors and seniors, we really encourage students to take advantage of visiting colleges and scheduling tours. This would be for both juniors who are starting their exploration and seniors who are kind of finalizing their plan and trying to determine where exactly they may enroll. And I just want to remind you that students can receive up to three excused absences per year for a college visit. So don't hesitate to get out there and, and get on campus and take a look at some schools. Um, we're also very excited to offer Mark Your Calendar for April 27th at 6 p.m., a career and college fair. Um, keep an eye out for more details on that. But if you have a sophomore or a junior in particular, although anyone is welcome, um, it will be a great opportunity to, to start exploring some careers in colleges. Um, yeah, I don't wanna discount seniors and freshmen as well. It's never too early to get started with freshmen and seniors, there may be some people who are still trying to figure out plans. So we really welcome everyone and would like to see a lot of people attend. So at this time of, um, at this time of the year, um, we have met with um, a lot of the students and they've been um, registering for classes for next year. So the freshmen, sophomores and juniors are, have, um, have done that. Um, what else are we doing? Um, most of the juniors and their parents have been invited to meet with um, their counselors to talk about future planning. So we're gonna continue to um, finish up those meetings. Um, uh, let's see. Um, and then we also, um, we're gonna be meeting with the sophomores in small groups sometime before April break. Um, and for seniors, um, you know, they're in the process of um, filling out, applying for scholarships. Um, that information for the local scholarships was mailed out to them uh, last week. So they should be receiving that any moment. And then of course they have the big uh, May 1st as their decision day. Any questions about that? Hi, this is Jackie Fritzinger. I'm a mother of a junior. And I just had a quick question going back to the career and college fair. Is that something uh, we just drop our kids off for the evening or are parents allowed to attend as well? We encourage parents to come as well. I think it's a great opportunity for kids and parents. So okay. Ellie, come along. Great, I'll thank you. The, this is our first college and career in the same evening. And I think it offers a wonderful opportunity. Usually attendance at either of those events is very high. I would strongly encourage parents to attend, you know, maybe not walk around with your children, depends on the relationship you have with, with your child, but it's really informative. And we typically reach out to some of the neighboring towns as well and encourage participation you know, for let's say Clinton and Guilford students just because of the proximity, but super well attended. I'm excited to have that back on the calendar, you know, since we're moving forward with dealing with COVID, I would definitely mark your calendars. And if you could attend, it's worthwhile attending both of those events. So counseling department, great job getting that up and running, you know, especially considering we're still in a pandemic. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions for Chrissy or Cynthia on any of the topics they shared? I will mention that the Common App Workshop over the summer is very popular. It gives our juniors a great jump start, and it's really easy, you know, to show up for a couple of hours and fill out the Common Application. You know, they've usually had to add dates. There's been so much interest, but I would pay attention to those because they do fill up fast, and we try to offer them for as many students as we could handle. And it, again, fantastic opportunity. Any questions? We'll give you a couple more seconds if you have any. Great. All right, Chrissy and Cynthia, thank you very much. Great information. I'll mark my calendar for a couple of those events as well, and I'll see you there. And now a couple of just minor updates for me. You know, as I believe everyone knows, yesterday was the first day that our school district transitioned from mass required to mass recommended. We did some communication with the students and staff last week, as well as just an e-notify message about how this is purely a choice and there's no wrong choice. I, I will tell you that yesterday, 
there seemed to be a different positive energy in the building. You know, we saw some kids with masks, some without. We saw some staff with and without. A lot of people had one just in case they changed their mind, which is totally appropriate. You know, the most common statement I heard yesterday was it's nice to see you because it was the first time we got to see some people that we haven't seen in a while. We were a little bit worried that there might be some negative attention for decisions people make, but we didn't see any of that. It really felt like a first day of school energy yesterday, which I thought was really positive. If you hear of any concerns as we move forward, please let us know because we always like to address those. And just keep in mind that the mask recommended applies to all of us. So if you come to a sporting event, for example, if you choose to wear a mask, that's up to you. If you choose not to, that's up to you as well. When you come to hopefully our spring musical, which is rent and should be outstanding, you know, same thing applies. That's totally up to you, your choice. I will say athletics, it depends on where the competition is. Like for example, our boys basketball team played at Hill House last night and the New Haven school system are still requiring masks. So their rules trump our rules because they're the home site. So we'll try and get that information out in advance. But again, I would say just yesterday was really positive energy. And I would say it was because people had a choice. And I, I do think it was nice to see everyone, you know, with a little extra positive moving around. The last part of our agenda that I just wanted to mention were around some calendar events. If you're a parent of a senior, two weeks ago, over the weekend, we sent out an email or the class advisors actually were the authors of the email. And it shared almost every single event that is going to take place with the seniors from now until the end of the year up to including graduation. If you didn't see that email, I would look for it and mark your calendar because there's a lot of events listed from things as you know specific as the class trip, which we're going back to, we're going to Six Flags, which should be really exciting, senior awards night, the prom, our exam schedule is set, yearbook dedication is set, brunch for our seniors just before the year is over for them, exam dates, none of those dates will change. As you see with school cancellations, the calendar does extend every time we have a cancellation, but not for the seniors. Things like graduation will not move, the brunch, the rehearsals, all of those are set dates. So if, again, if you're a parent of the class of 22, I would mark your calendars and hopefully you can attend everything that's on those calendars that parents are supposed to go to and hopefully your kids can also attend as well. One of the things that you may notice is that senior year is really expensive. You know, there's a lot of costs at the end. We have an account to support seniors and we make it hopefully as known as possible that if a parent of a senior or a senior themselves has a financial concern, they can speak with me confidentially. We don't want to see any senior not attend an event because of finances. If they truly don't want to go to Six Flags, that's fine. But if the cost of Six Flags is in the way, we can cover those costs. And that's something I would really like to reiterate. We do it every year. There's again, an account that's set aside for our senior class to make sure they don't miss any of the opportunities to wrap up, not only senior year, but their public school experiences. So I would be on the lookout again, if you didn't see that email, it's in your inbox. We'll send any updates if, for example, things change, but I really don't see many events changing because they're all set at this point. The only thing I see us adding is a announcement day, probably on that Monday, May 2nd, where students announce what their plans are for the next school year. That's been really popular here. We're working on what that will look like moving forward. For just our underclassmen, the junior prom has been set since the juniors have been freshmen. If you're unaware of that, it's Friday, May 20th. It's at Woodwinds. I don't see any restrictions this year with proms. I see no masks required. A student could wear one if they want to. I don't see restrictions with guests. Like last year, we had both proms, but only seniors could attend the senior prom and only juniors could attend the junior prom. I do not see that as a restriction moving forward. Again, things can change with COVID in the wrong direction, but assuming they do not, we'll have typical proms moving forward. I will also mention that two of the agenda items that I have for this Friday student leadership meeting, I want our students input on a pep rally or two because we miss those. Those are really 
highly energized, usually fun events that we are going to consider doing again. I want student input first before we move forward. And as I mentioned earlier in the year, if we got to the point where we're at now, homecoming is certainly an option. Again, homecoming doesn't have to be in the fall. I am going to talk with student leadership to see if that's something they're interested in us pursuing. I can't imagine they would say no. I think they'll definitely say yes, and then we'll be looking for a date for that in the very near future, because we want that before the proms begin. And that's something we'll send more information out if and when it gets planned. And one last minute um, event that we are planning right now that we're hoping will, will run, which I think it's going to, is I've been working with Knight in Hand and Leslie Lopez in particular, and they're planning a prom dress event at Daniel Hand High School on Friday, March 25th, from five o'clock in the evening till nine o'clock. There is a local consignment shop that has hundreds of unused dresses. And you can imagine over the years with COVID, the number of people who bought a dress and never got to use it. You know, most of the dresses from what I've been told have tags on them still. We're looking at having a prom dress event. I'm not sure if that's the title of it. We're still in the works of figuring it out, but very soon this month on the 25th, where students will be able to come and we're going to invite some neighboring towns as well. Because if you've never gone prom dress shopping, you know, it's, a, in a, it's an experience to say the least, and it's certainly not inexpensive. But we're looking at offering quality prom dresses for students at a lower cost that will all actually turn into a fundraiser for night in hand. And we have some behind the scene works as well going on with some local area hairdressers and where you might get your nails done. We're hoping to do some free um, raffles for like a free prom ticket or possibly a free prom dress. So you can kind of pencil that date in right now. We think it has some really exciting potential and I'm hoping to confirm later today that this event will be a go. And I think a lot of students will attend and that will be one again where parents can attend as well. And it should be a really positive opportunity. And the fact that we're considering homecoming, I would like to know that we're doing homecoming or not before this event, because you could kind of do the two birds in one event. You know, some students will go to homecoming, junior prom and senior prom. You know, that comes up in a hurry. So we're looking at three big events. So you will hear more information as soon as this is confirmed. And I think it has a lot of potential to be very well received. Anyone have any questions about some of the calendar events, especially that last one? If I had more exact detail, I would give it to you. I know Leslie is actually going to review and take a look at all the dresses today to see how many people we can invite and if we should invite outside towns. Again, any questions? Quiet group today. I know the recording on always makes for a quiet group. All right, so that wraps up our agenda. What I would ask is the Friday weekly messages that I send will start to change with a lot of detail for year end events. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out to any of the administrators. We'll happily find the answer for you and get back to you but we're looking forward to a really positive and very normal school year to end. And you know, there should be a lot of great events that we have scheduled and, and the student energy has been outstanding. So I will send a recording out on Friday of this meeting. If you wanna rewatch it, feel free to do so. But if you have any questions offline, reach out to us as well. I do appreciate all the presenters today, as well as all the community members who took some time out of their morning to join us. I just wanna say, have a great rest of your day. And again, thanks for attending everyone. Thank you. Thanks.